cannabis, marijuana, hemp oil, you name it, CBD, CB1, CB, all this stuff. The market today in cannabis, let's just stick with nationwide. The information is not consistent. The marketplace is a mess. What you see on the label may not be what's in the bottle or the plant or the food or the whatever it is you decide to take. Cannabis, whether it's THC, marijuana, hemp oil, you treat it just like you would alcohol. That's how I have come to understand it. I used to be a very big wine drinker. I loved my wine. Once I started taking the isolate hemp and now the full spectrum hemp and a little bit of THC, I quit drinking. Did I do this all on my own? Absolutely not. I did this under the very specific care of my, my uh, primary care physician. I did it under the care of my MD psychiatrist, psychopharmacologist, whom I have been seeing since 1994. Why? Because I was born with a broken brain part. I have been diagnosed as manic depressive about 30 years ago. I am medicated for it. I take Prozac. Now, did I want to make sure that all these years that I've worked with my doctors to stabilize my manic depression, which it is, for the most part, stabilized? I have my moments. But um, I did it right. And I would hope that everybody out there in pain can do it right. And I know not everybody can afford the kind of medical care I have. So I'm trying to give you the absolute best scientific information as an investigative reporter and as a news person, which is all I've done for the last 50 years. Yeah, 50 years. I take what I do very responsibly, very responsibly. It's not an easy subject. There's so much junk on the market. So what I have here, I'm going to show you individually. There's a big picture of it all, but I'm going to go through it one at a time. And I'm going to, I'm going to separate it into what I think, as of today, is the best that I can study and the best that I would take if I were recommending this to someone I care about. So I've settled on the miracle isolated CBD. I've settled on the Mr. CBD 3000 milligram. Now it comes in different milligrams and if you have any questions it just simply means there's more there's more hemp oil in the full spectrum with the cannabinoids than there is in one that has a thousand milligrams on the label. If you got any questions about the, the labeling thingy and, and the milligram, th give, give me a call. I'd be, I'm more than happy to answer what questions I can from a scientific standpoint of being a reporter and being able to study this stuff and having used myself as a guinea pig. So, um, and then of course, I accelerate, which is what the Israelis have found, is that when you take a medical grade THC slash marijuana. When you take a little tiny bit of this in association with a full spectrum or an isolated hemp, the THC makes this work better, faster. It's what I found, because until I added the THC to my regimen of hemp, it didn't work. Now, everybody's different. Now, the one problem with this, and I experienced it because I, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do a program, I'm gonna be the guinea pig here, and I have been. So, in spite of all the good stuff that this Outco company has to offer, I have settled on only that, and they call it a tincture, I call it a liquid, it's a liquid, it's an oil. Um, 
I have the one here that I occasionally take if I can't sleep. If I'm not sleeping, I take two drops, 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 not dropperfuls, drops, before I go to bed. Because this has 729.27 milligrams per bottle. Now, they have some that have peppermint. They have some that have flavors. I have an opinion about this stuff. Don't mess with Mother Nature. Cannabis has been around since the plants first started growing on this earth billions of years ago. So let's stick with the pure, pure stuff. Pure pharmaceutical grade THC. Whether you're going to put it under your tongue, drops, or whether you're going to inhale it through a vapor pen. Safest way, in my opinion, to do this because you can control the amount you're inhaling very, very quick. I have to keep emphasizing that everybody, every one of us is different. And we're not going to be able to get ourselves out of pain unless we understand what we're taking, where it comes from, how is it licensed, how is it, how is it tested, where are you going to buy it. Got any questions? Here's my phone number. Now, Mr. CBD, I have tried these. They work, but they don't work as well for me as they work for other people, okay? Um, but they work. This is a topical ointment and, um, you know, you, you rub it on like anything else. Just, it's a, it's a little ointment. Now, in order to, you know, get into some of this stuff, when it comes to pure hemp, they don't lock it up so you can't open it. Um, you know, it's just a, it's very simple. It's a, it's a little cream. And you gotta, I, I know people that have tried this and that use it on a continuing basis that um, if their back hurts or something or their shoulders or whatever, it works. Mine is caused by, str by stress, so it doesn't particularly work with me. If it, if it was caused by like I'd stretched a muscle or something, if, if I exercised, which I don't. Um, this, uh, this Mr. CBD topical ointment, I've used it. I know other people who have used it to great effect, positive, very positive effect. Then you have the Miracle, which of course makes this. They have a hemp chiro cream, like a chiropractor cream. Um, this is a professional strength. It has been, it works very well for people I know. And uh, so you're, you're, you're good with this. You're good with this. Doesn't work for everybody. Doesn't particularly work for me. But it works for a lot of people. So I'm narrowing down the choices today to if you are a senior in pain, here's what I did. I started with this, 2,500 milligrams, three times a day with a full dropper full. Now, remember I mentioned about if you have high blood pressure on blood pressure medicine, do not do that. Start out very, 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 very little and very slow. You don't start out three times a day with a full dropper full of hemp oil. Do not do that if you have high blood pressure. Why? Well, um, when I was young, my dad had several heart attacks. He died of his fifth heart attack when I was 19. So I remember back then, and this was in the 50s and 60s, he would, if he got chest pains, he would take something called nitroglycerin, which would act as what is called a vasodilator. It's a fancy word, vasodilator. And what a vasodilator does is just kind of what the word, the word says it is. Your, your, your vessels are dilated, which means they get, they're made to make big. The chemical reaction with like nitroglycerin into your body forces your arteries to like open up a little bit, thus allowing more blood to flow through your arteries, thus allowing 
your heart to beat a little bit normal and possibly, possibly avoid a heart attack. Hemp oil does the same thing, whether it's CBD or full spectrum. It does the same thing. It gets into your body and opens up those arteries and lets your blood flow easier. There's a problem with that. Your brain is telling your heart to beat at a certain rate because you have something wrong with your arteries where the blood goes through it. They're either clogged because of calcium deposits or what they call cholesterol, whatever. A lot of different ways. So they're clogged up. So they give you medicine to continue to dilate open up your vessels. So your brain thinks when you're taking this high blood pressure medicine that you're good to go. Now the minute you take a hemp oil product, which is a vasodilator, it's going to immediately lower your blood pressure. It can lower it a few points or it can lower it, boom, 20 points. Science isn't really really up on this yet, but I have several people I stay in touch with that experienced the negative effect of taking hemp oil when you have high blood pressure. And that is you get a rapid heartbeat. Scare, well, that could be frightening. Well, the reason why that happens is because your brain is conditioned to think that, okay, everything is okay because there's a certain medication that is keeping your heart pumping harder in order to get through a, an artery that isn't as open as it should be. Okay, so how do you avoid the rapid heartbeat? Well, it's very simple. You take a little, little, tiny, tiny bit, like a quarter of a, of a dropper full of the hemp oil, by either the isolate or the full spectrum. You take a little, tiny bit, and that, and you do that for a period of time. It can be a week, it can be two weeks. Do it once a day, then over a few more days, take another little bit. You have to decide that for yourself. If you need help with that, give me a call. I have some studies on it. But if you take high blood pressure medicine or have high blood pressure, please, 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 please take a little tiny bit to start. Because over time, I have found in certain studies and in people that I track doing this, that it will lower your blood pressure. One person in a study that I'm following happens to have gone from like 148 down to 125, 130 in, in their uh, blood pressure reading. Well, that's pretty good. So of course, their doctor let them reduce the amount of blood pressure medicine they were taking. But she went to a doctor. Don't mess with your medicine without a doctor. So I'm telling you, even though people say, oh yeah, you know, no problem. You take, take all of this you don't want. No, it's medicine. It's medicine. Same thing with the THC. It's medicine. Little tiny. Now, I, uh, I've, I've really, this, this stuff isn't easy because the governments, the, the cities, the states, the feds, all this stuff got quote unquote legalized or semi-legalized without the education and the medical science being ready for it. We cannot turn back the clock. You can't put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste thing. Once it's out, it's out. It's everywhere. Cannabis, hemp oil, CBD, it's everywhere. And 70% of what's out there in the marketplace is not what it says it is. Some of it could come from China and it's contaminated. Some of it could come from someplace else that's even in America, somebody's greedy and they water down the critical components. There's a bunch of thieves out there. All they care about is the money. I care about the fact that a lot of us are in pain. I care about the fact that I am now out of physical 
pain due to my inflammation and arthritis because I knew how to investigate this. I knew how to research it. I knew how to do what had to be done if I was to get out of pain and not have to take an opioid or a, a anti-inflammatory drug like a, a leave, which I could no longer take. Um, I'm just trying to bring you the basics of this and hope that, that, that what I have gone through and what I am bringing to you is, is, is factual data, if nothing else, based upon what, hap what I did. Uh, there's also something else about the use of the THC, whether it's in the form of a medical liquid or in the form of a vapor pen. Um, older people can't take the vapor pen because it bothers their throat. I take it occasionally. Um, this, is, this is a medical grade, goes under your tongue. Drops. You will build up a tolerance for the THC. In other words, as time goes on, when I first started out, and if I'd had a really difficult day, all I had to do was take a single one-second puff, and I'd be fine. My shoulders would relax and be fine, and be, be that way for several hours. Uh, over the last couple of years, my system has built up a tolerance. So now, instead of one puff, it's two one-second puffs, which amounts to maybe, maybe four to five milligrams, which is really tiny a day or every few days. So you, you do get used to it, and you may have to increase it a little bit. You gotta think, you gotta use your brain. Call me. The, um, the tolerance issue is a real issue. All you can do is, uh, is be careful. So all I ask you to do is be careful. Now, when it comes to this, THC or this, let me explain something that, that I did. Uh, I had a particularly, I woke up in the morning and I, I'd had a nightmare about, I'm under a lot of stress. I'm doing some things which you'll learn about later that I think are really positive, but it's taken a long time. And things that take a long time put Patty under stress. So I woke up in the morning and I was like this. And uh, I had a meeting starting at one o'clock in the afternoon. I took two drops of the THC, believing that my previous experience, I'd be fine by one o'clock in the afternoon. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, six hours I was giving myself before I got in the car. Okay, so I took it, got my shoulders went down, felt pretty good, no problem. Had no effect, I did not feel the effect that I would have felt with the vapor pen, which is within five minutes. So I felt I was pretty good waiting six hours, five or six hours to drive bef after I had taken this in the morning. Well, while I was in my meeting about three o'clock in the afternoon, this hit me. All of a sudden, my mouth went dry. I was trying to carry on an intelligent conversation, couldn't remember my words. And I saw a tooth that somebody drove me home. You have no idea how this stuff is going to affect you until you try it in very tiny doses at home when you're not going to be driving, period. Do not drive because you have no idea how these things will affect you until you've been taking them a while and trying to figure out what is best for you. Low, 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 low doses to begin with. That's the key. That's all I can tell you, tiny amounts under your doctor's care especially if you have high blood pressure or any other kind of medical conditions. This stuff is medicine. It is medicine. It is very powerful medicine. I think we will find out in the future that it is probably the answer to a lot of our addiction problems in America. Can you become addicted to this stuff? I think you can come addicted to just about anything. We're talking about adults here, ladies and gentlemen. I am not talking about kids. You keep this stuff away from children. You keep it away from anybody under the age of 21. Their brains are still trying to formulate themselves. Now I have, which I'll bring up in another program, 
I have people who have called me that are taking the Mr. CBD full spectrum in addition to the isolate from Miracle. Little tiny bit of this to activate this. And a lot of them find this creams to be really good. Now, I am going to mention a couple of things just off the, off the immediate subject for a minute. Uh, there are stuff for our puppies, which help them with their, when they get older, they have arthritis. There is specially formulated hemp, only hemp, for our puppies, our babies. One is from Miracle, and one is from Mr. CBD. I've given to my dogs. You will find out that you have to give them very, very little, or you'll be walking behind them picking up their little accidents. Be careful, just like anything else, just like us. One more thing. For those of you who do the recreational thing, if you're going to do it from what they call the plant, the little buds, this is what King's Garden, grown in Palm Springs, cut in Palm Springs, owned by people who live in Palm Springs, and they let my cameras in. King's Garden. If you have to buy some of this stuff, and by the way, these jars, they're kid proof. And this is adult proof. <laughs> this is adult proof. <laughs> Try opening this stuff with your fingers. It, when you're over 60, it gets a little difficult. But this, this, is, this is the, um, this, is, this to me is recreational. So if you're going to use this, for recreational purposes and you're over the age of 21 and you're an adult and you know what you're doing, you want to play with this stuff, make sure you get the one that you know where it's grown, you know where it comes from, and you know who owns the company. Her name is Julie Montante and she owns PSA Organic at Palm Springs. You've met Julie Montante before. She has been a guest on my show. Uh, Julie is the owner of uh, a cannabis dispensary in Palm Springs. She is the only cannabis dispensary owner I have ever had on my program to date. One question, what is your responsibility as a cannabis dispensary owner? You decide what you buy that people can come in and and, and buy from you. You decide if it's a good product or not a good product. I consider you to be a responsible dispensary owner. A lot of people out there are not. I've read an article that 70% of all cannabis products on the market today do not reflect what is on the label. How do you work through all this? Thank you, Patty. Um, I've been 20 years in the industry, and I research, as you do, all products that come in. I listen to my patients and customers that come in and choose to want their variety of products that they like. And it's now with all the testing that's available to, you know, all the testing and the products that come in, we now have a larger variety of quality products. So it's quality, it's merchandising, and it's getting the patient what their, what their need is, the need that they have. Okay, when I came to you for my problem almost two years ago, you were the only one that I'd been to in two years that knew how to fix it, and you did. I heard a figure that 80% of all the cannabis exchanged in the state of California is not done through licensed dispensaries. That's done basically what we would call black market under the table. Well, that is the problem. Um, the cities and states are now looking at that issue. Well, they're, they're they looking, have, you know why? Because they, 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 they're not making enough money. Well, the city of Palm Springs just is, they just put into act lowering our, um, um, yeah, I, re I read distribution that. Distribution and yeah, that, cultivation. That is right, nothing. Right, but it's coming. 
So if it's going to come, it's going to start to come slowly in. We as cannabis owners need to get with our cities and tell them, hey, it needs to be at the dispensary level so we can pass it on to our patients. Well, That's really where it needs to go. Do you go. believe there's too much tax on yes. the products you sell? Yes. It's putting it out of the reach of, and I don't talk about recreational. You know me. I do not go into recreational cannabis. Medicinal only. I'm not going to talk about anybody under the age of 21 taking any of this because I think it's bad for their brain. Correct. With exception, medical. You have a lot of overhead. This is a very expensive business to be in when you do it right. Well, we have, like I said, we have HR department. We have over 250 employees. Uh, we have large facilities. King's Garden is sold from north to south. Mm -hmm. We have dis distribution companies that distribute for us. So it's a product that's very well known, and uh, the quality is superb. You're getting almost anywhere from 34% THC count down to 24 is the lowest. You are a responsible owner. I'd like to see more people being a responsible owner like you. And uh, we're going to continue to educate. Education's what it's about. Again, it's not an easy subject. But I am pain free. And I am still relatively stable mentally. <laughs> when I get into certain program areas and I give my opinion that some people don't agree with, they have a tendency to say what's wrong with her. Well, I do have a broken brain part, but I admit it and it makes me very cognizant and I find mental health extremely important, which is why I try to do what I can do in the mental health area for people like me or you or your children. Mental health is not a stigma. Mental health is like having, I got a broken brain part. I didn't put a Band-Aid on it. I went to a doctor and got properly medicated. If you, get, if you break a bone, you go to the hospital, get your arm set. You don't put a Band-Aid on it. But when it comes to cannabis as we know it today, I want you to be very, very, very careful. I have research the products I've, I've, I've told you about today. I take them myself. It's up to you what you choose to do with this information. 